Hi everybody, I am so excited to go live with Sam. I'm gonna call him in, you guys. This is gonna be great. We're talking about transformation. All right, let's invite him. Okay, let's see. Ooh, all right. Just waiting for Sam to accept. Okay, where he at? Sorry guys, hold on, hold in with me. We're inviting him in. He's invited. <laughs> I jumped on a little early, so we'll see. But I'm really excited to talk to Sam. He's actually, um, a per, he's a personal trainer and he is my personal trainer and a good friend of mine um he started with him oh it says he's unable to join let's invite him again see what the story is oh there hey. he is hey <laughs> hey how's it going good i was just trying to talk about you while i was inviting you in <laughs> Yeah, I had to like click it twice before it actually let me in. But I'm I'm in. I made it in. So you made it. You're in. We're in. <laughs> I'm in. We're in. We're doing it. So, We're live. Yes. I was just telling everybody that you are um a personal trainer and that a really good friend of mine started seeing you. Has it been like three years? It's gonna see pre COVID, right? It was right before COVID for a year, I feel like. Yeah. Oh, it was at least one year before COVID. So how many years has it been? About three years. So yeah, about yeah. three years. Oh my gosh. Two to three years. Yeah, so he did. And then I um, joined probably, it was a little bit before COVID, and then we took a break and then came back. And so that um, I really enjoyed working with you on so many different levels and that you have this amazing transformation story that's super powerful and very inspiring. And I just kind of wanted to share that with more people and talk about it and talk about how... Um, you know, just taking small leaps can make a huge impact because that's kind of what I do. It's definitely what you do. And I think sometimes people are just like, they don't even realize that changing one thing can snowball into changing your entire life, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and thank you for inviting me. Um, I don't really do these that often. So it's great that you're making me do it because I, I, most of the time I just don't want to. But <laughs> I really, like you said, I need to share the story more and it, and it does inspire people. Um, there's times that I forget about the story until, you know, I put something out there and then I, I see that it gets feedback and I'm like, okay, this actually does make a difference to people. And, and I, I have helped so many people along the way with this. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to kind of just tell us some of the story kind of start. Um, if you got any questions, you don't feel free to stop me. Um, I can rant sometimes or sometimes I'm not saying the exact things I want to say. So, you know, or answer the right question. So let me know. Um, but when I was a, a young kid, um, you know, I, I guess right after four or five years old, I just got big. I was bigger than all my other friends. I was taller and fatter and bigger than everybody. And I think I got to my worst about 13 years old. Um, at 13, I was weighing upwards of 270 to 280 pounds um, at 13 years old. So obviously that's not healthy. Um, you know, I was taken to the doctor and the doctor would say, hey, you got to do something different. Otherwise, you know, diabetes. Uh, my grandfather died of diabetes, so it was already in the family. And I was actually having some of the signs of uh, pre-diabetes or pre-diabetic. Um, that didn't really hit me. I mean, I didn't understand it at that age. I didn't really, you know, they're taking me to the doctor. But I just thought, oh, these are my parents, whatever. They, you know, they want to take me to the doctor. It's normal. Um, now I know like how close I actually was to being diabetic, which is wow. crazy to me because um, it could have been right there. Yeah. Um, so I'd say it was really sports is what kind of got me like inspired. Um, I started playing sports and I couldn't run up and down the field. I couldn't do anything. Um, so that was kind of my motivator to where I was like, hey, I want to be better. I want to play with my friends. I want to, you know, be able to make it up and down the field and you know, actually play. And, 
you know, first week of practice, I don't think I actually even made it to the whole practice. Um, I was, I had asthma as well. So when I was weighing 270 pounds, I had asthma and, uh, I would just be on the sidelines huffing and puffing. So I, I made it a, I made it a goal. Like we talked about little things, like it just started with one little thing. Um, you know, I started eating right. So the three little things that I just did to like stop eating or stop eating the bad things was I took away all sodas. So I was an avid soda drinker. I think I'd have soda with most of my meals and got rid of soda. Uh, the other one was bread. Um, I just made the simple thing of if there was bread on the, you know, if it was a sandwich or whatever, I would try and avoid it. But most of the time I'll just take one away, right? That's kind of an easy fix, taking away the bread. And then fried foods. Fried foods was a tough one for me growing up in the South. Um, almost everything is fried. So I had a lot of fried food. But removing those three things, um, soda, fried foods, and bread, that alone made a difference for me. You know, um, that and then obviously now I'm playing sports, I'm exercising. So I started making a routine. And my routine was running a mile every day. I mean, I don't think I ran a mile at first. I don't think it was a run. Right. I think, I think it was run a little bit, stop, run a little bit, stop, run a little bit, stop. But I had a trail on my neighborhood that I would run. And like I said, I would do, uh, my goal was to do one. I was like, I want to do this one. And maybe it took me way longer the first time I did it. And, you know, it became a habit where I was doing this every day and I got good at it. And I started doing push ups, started doing sit ups. And, we talked about the three things that I got rid of from eating. I, I got rid of, or I started doing three things for exercise and I was running a mile, push-ups and sit-ups, you know, 13 years old. Yeah. It's a good start. Right. Okay. Question. Um, question. Yeah. So who told you to do those things? Like if your family obviously said that wasn't like really a super healthy environment, like how did you learn how to do that? I mean, where did you get that from? So my dad, he, he would always push, you know, he was kind of, um, he wanted me to be a football player. So he was feeding me a lot, but he also wanted me to do sports and, okay. you know, he wanted me to do that thing. So I think I, as a couple, you know, just men's fitness magazines that were around and yeah, just kind of educating myself. We didn't have the, well, the internet was around, but it wasn't as, you know, as simple as just looking at your phone, right. you know, it was just reading those magazines, looking at like those workout routines, looking at, you know, the nutrition segments and mm -hmm. just reading that over time and getting an idea and just realizing, Hey, you know, I didn't have equipment at home. So I was like, what can I do? Push up sit ups and your typical movies, you know, Rocky, you, know, <laughs> you can go into those kind of things where it's like, you see them doing the sit ups, yeah. hanging upside down, doing push ups, And I think that was just kind of the, sim the most simple, basic thing that I could do. And um, like I said, those, those little changes, doing those things, making a habit, like I said, it, it wasn't easy at first. I don't think I really succeeded at doing anything at first, right? You failed over and over again. If I wanted to do 100 push-ups in a day, I don't, probably didn't get that for a while. And then it got to the point where I was doing 100 push-ups every day routinely. Um, so within that, you know, we went from 270 pounds, make those little changes. And a year later, a year. Okay. I had one year later, you know, playing sports all along the year, which also gave me another form of exercise. I lost close to 100 pounds. I want to say, if you want to be exact, we're probably close to 91, 92. 100 just sounds better. So <laughs> we'll say 100 pounds. Um, and I got down to 185, 190 from 270, 280 that I was the heaviest at. Um, and now, you know, we're playing sports and now I'm able to keep up with everybody. Now I'm one of the you know, better athletes actually, because I did these things, you know, for a whole year now and it just became a routine. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's, that's one year. And then obviously since then playing more sports, um, you know, doing what I do now, it's just been, I'm not that person anymore, but that person still lives within me is what I always say. I still got that fat person within me. And if I didn't do what I did, if I didn't train people, if I didn't, you know, you know, have the job of telling other people to do this thing, I think that I easily can get that. I could easily go back there. I could easily go back to being that 10, 70 pound guy. Um, just because, I mean, I, I know so much, but I'm saying it's so easy to just fall back. It's so easy to, for us as humans to just not want to do the things that we have to do, right? You can apply that to any aspect of life. Mm -hmm. And we all suffer from those things. But I think it's just having those little disciplines 
um, knowing what to do. A lot of people just don't know what to do, right? I guess what are um, what are questions like that that you have as far as like, you know, what are the things that what are the things that you thought you had to do that you now know, um, like now you know that those things aren't like they work, but it's a very common misconception. You know what I mean? Like, what are some things that you know? Like, can you give me some examples? Yeah, I think. Well, when it comes to, I mean, I think what you're saying is really resonating with me and is all about the mindset piece of mm -hmm. just starting and not giving up. I think a lot of times we like start something and then we don't feel confident that it's going to work or it feels hard. And then we get in our heads and we stop. And so I love, that's the part of your story that I love is that you were, you know, I mean, it's one thing if you're just trying to lose a little bit, it's another thing if you're like <laughs> trying to lose over a hundred pounds to have the motivation, especially I would think at that age, like where people, you know, people are bullies and they could be making fun of you or I, I don't know. I just think that's really powerful. But for me, I remember, um, in my early twenties, I was definitely going through a full blown, I didn't realize it, but I was going through a full blown inflammation. You know, it was the start of kind of my journey of autoimmunity. And I was eating all of these foods that no matter what I did, I was blowing up because I was in a state of inflammation and I gained, and I was really unhappy and I gained like 40 pounds. It was it was crazy. And, um, I was like, okay, I need to start working out. And, and so I would go to the gym and I would, I had no idea what I was doing. And I stopped because I didn't feel confident. Like I felt like I'm going to, I, and I think that that was honestly just games I played in my head of, um, well, I'm going to hurt myself, which I, I know you can, but I think I over, yeah. like, I like blew it up to this. Oh, I can't do that. Cause I'm going to hurt myself or, you know, and I would make all these excuses like, okay, well, I can't afford a trainer or I don't have time for this or I don't have time for that. And I think a lot of times people do that. Like we don't realize it, but we start making all these reasons for why we can't invest in ourselves or take the leap. And we don't really go deep enough to uncover what the what the real meaning behind that is. And that's kind of why I think this is, I love your story and also how you've helped our friend too, like just to touch on that, that like, this is somebody who came to you thinking, okay, I just want to, I'm just using him as an example, but I just want to work out and, you know, gain some muscle. And, and then all of a sudden you see somebody standing taller, right? Like standing taller, not just physically, but mentally, and they start gaining confidence and it turns into like, I'm going to do all of these things out of this boundary that I even didn't even realize was possible. And like how it just awakens something inside of you when you take the leap and you keep pushing through, even when it's hard. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And I want to touch on that bullying. Like that was something I experienced as well um, as a kid. Mm -hmm. And that was definitely some of the motivation as well. So yeah, um, I can definitely relate to that. Um, Real quickly, I have something playing in the background on my phone and it's kind of messing up the, can I, do you know if I could just close that real quick or will it mess it up? As long as you keep this up, you should be able to. Okay. Okay. And I'm seeing lots of comments. So while you're doing that, I'll just say, it looks like um, the boss believes says, seeing you push yourself and make that change happen for yourself showed me that anything is possible. Love you, Sam. Aww. And then. <laughs> yeah, it, it was it was like another voice in the background. It was like a video playing in the background. I was like what? disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so people are sending you love in the comments saying that you inspired them as well. So that's great. Yeah. Oh, awesome. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. So yeah, the bullet that's what I was that's kind of one of the things is I was I just, you know, I mean, kids are brutal, right? Like <laughs> they're so brutal. Oh yeah. <laughs> for sure, for sure. And and um do you want to talk about Daniel, our friend Daniels? I don't yeah, know if he's yeah. watching it all. <laughs> yeah, so just kind of explaining like that. Like he came to you and was like, I just want to work out and get stronger. And then like, the, I mean, I'll let you share what you saw in him. I mean, it was probably just this like, I mean, I saw something different because you were working with him as a trainer. And as a friend, I was like, whoa, my friend is turning into this like really confident, strong, physically, mentally person it was a whole nother level, which I don't think he ever thought was what was going to happen. And how do you see that with your clients and Daniel too? So, yeah. So we're talking about making an investment earlier and, you know, 
those things that I did, that routine that I did, the, the person that I became, I mean, that was the biggest investment that I could have made because like we talk about confidence, um, you know, these habits, longevity, health, right? What are, you, you can name a list of benefits. It, it's something that, you know, has paid off for me. And those are the kind of things that I want to give to my clients. I want people don't really know their own power until they kind of experience it or they don't know the feeling that you can get from making those changes and, and being better, right? Feeling stronger, feeling happier, feeling like you're in better shape, right? And, you know, one of the biggest, you know, I have many client stories, but our, our mutual friend, and this is how Jamie got started with me, um, Daniel, he, he's somebody who came to me. And I mean, we just saw that progression from, or I, I mean, I saw it, you saw it as a friend. Um, he came to me and, you know, just kind of, you know, down in the dumps, wasn't, you know, his, his best self, his best version of himself at all. Um, you know, his posture was just very, this kind of person, if we just think about it around his shoulders down, um, wouldn't want to, you know, look people in the eye, just very kind of shy and timid, absolute best guy ever. Nicest guy. I love Dan. Everyone loves Dan. We all know Dan. Yes. Um, and what I just, you know, he just came to me and said, Hey, I want to start working out this and that. And just twice a week, he was coming to me and we just started and, you know, just started lifting some weights and. All it took was about two to three weeks for him to get that that interest. He, he got an interest. And then he starts going and watching, you know, workout videos. And then he starts saying, like, oh, man, you know what? It'd be really cool to look like this guy. And, and, and I'm really interested in this. And and he, he just absorbed it all. And he became a whole other human being. I mean, from the guy that went like this and, you know, didn't want to look at anybody in the eye to, you know, somebody who's repping out pull-ups with 45-pound plate hanging and, boxing. and you know yeah boxing and i mean young guys will you know he's doing a pull-up with 45 pound plate and there'll be a young 20 year old guy look at him and be like i can't even do that and you know it's it's just so impressive you know he, then he's picked up boxing and became a whole another human being i mean it was just like i said going from somebody who was just like you know a posture like this and just not confident to somebody who's just now living life to the fullest and you know, it's it was the perfect thing that he needed. I can relate to, you know, the person I was before. I mean, I was very shy and timid. Still kind of am. But, you know, definitely more so when I was a 270-pound guy. Mm -hmm. And those, those are the things that I want to give to people. Like, it's just being able to understand that little changes, um, taking that extra 30 minutes to plan out, um, you know, whether it's exercise, yoga, um, cardio, um, self meditation, something that's going to better your, your health and make it a habit. It's actually going to, it's going to make a difference over time, right? I mean, you speak the same things, right? That's, that's what we talk about all the time, how those little things just make a difference. Mm -hmm. And let's go back to Daniel. What were the things that you saw from your end? I mean, I saw him progress as far as being able to bench, you know, 35 to 225 in, in a year and just become this, whole different person yeah yeah and um in the comments people are saying stay disciplined helps a lot when you have a support system totally absolutely yeah Very true. Know, so i've been friends with him since the 90s <laughs> and mm -hmm. um seen a lot of different changes but always what you're saying like like the when he first came to you, I mean, it was definitely the pot, like the posture, like just, it wasn't, he wasn't fully confident. I think a lot of times we don't have clarity around really where we're at. And then some people tend to Everybody. retreat, mm -hmm. you know, like they tend to retreat instead of, and, and I think he was in that space. And we actually went to a, um, like an arm wrestling competition. It was like, at I do remember hearing about that. Yeah. <laughs> we went to some arm wrestling competition and Daniel's like, I'm going to get in there. And I was like, and I probably, honestly, I am not, I've been told I'm, um, I say things that are not the sweetest. <laughs> like, I, <laughs> like I'm very direct and can be kind yes. of like, you know, I don't mean it that way though. And so I think I probably said to him like, oh my God, don't do that. That guy's going to break your arm. And I think he was just like, you know, <laughs> like he was mm -hmm. like, that's it. Like, that's it. I'm like, you know, that and a couple other things and I'm going to go get strong or whatever. And then, so then he said he was working out and I was like, oh my God, that's weird. But that was like the last thing anybody that ever had known him would thought that he would do. He was like, that was not, and it was just like, that's what I mean. It was a complete leap, a complete like transformation thought 
to even go work out. And so um, what I saw was immediately just this, like, I have something to cling on to that's mine that is all me like you know like yes you are training him but ultimately it's it's like this is my decision right to do this and it's it takes all of everything is i have to do it all like nobody else can take control of this but me and that was a really cool change like just a mental change because i think that was different than what normally was a part of um his kind of persona and so immediately saw him just awaken like kind of mentally like I'm doing something for myself and it's strong and I'm getting stronger and stronger and stronger so it's all physical changes but more as a friend it was the it was the mental confidence and the the outward like I mean it changed everything like um you know his just his whole entire being and aura and the way that he shows up in the world and and then the boxing was like what (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? so I think that that's just so powerful and that's part of it. it's like with your clients I mean do you see this a lot where people come in and they think they just want one thing and then it opens up this like you know dynamic yeah. thing exactly I would say that like I say I think everyone who sticks with it there's always you know there's always you know especially when I started out you get people that just come and go as far as like hey I want to do something and then they just don't do it consistently, right? But my long-term clients, the ones I've had for a while, the ones that stay around and are consistent, you know, I always tell them they come with goals. They come with, you know, kind of the basic goals. I, I want to lose 10 pounds. I want to, you know, I want to fit in my in my pants. You know, it's always the same kind of goals. I want to look better, slimmer, trimmer, right? I always tell people, I'm like, the one thing that I'm going to give you for sure, 100%, absolutely, is I'm just going to make you move and feel better. So, you know, if you got those two things, you're going to start realizing, like, I always get the, I always get these comments back, you know, from my clients, like, Hey, you know, I was, I was reaching for something or I was bending down for something and it always hurt my back or it always hurt my knee. And I realized it, it didn't bother me anymore, you know, or, you know, things like that. I can pick up my kid. I can play with my kid. You know, I had knee problems. I don't have, I, don't, I have foot problems. I don't have anymore. And those are the things that will actually, benefits you in the long term because those are things that usually stop you from continuing to work out right it always takes you know you can do have a good workout you know period of time oh i worked out hard for nine months but then you know you you hurt your shoulder or knee and then you're like oh i can't work out for three months and then what happens you're right back to where you were nine months ago right so i always you know tell people i want you to find the strength within you right i want you to you know see that pushing through these little barriers, you know, reaching these little goals, you know, it's always cool when somebody's like, Hey, I remember when we started, we were, you know, we're doing five pounds, you know, now we're doing this for, you know, 12, 15 pounds. And it's like, I'm killing it. And I'm like, yeah, you you know, you you see that difference. And what, what does that do for you? Right. How many times does that happen where I'm like, Hey, you know, remember when 40 pounds on the road was hard for you and now you're repping it out and saying, Hey, put some more on there. How does that feel? Like, how does that make you feel? Yeah. I mean, makes me feel I'm actually I I definitely am shocked too just with me I I never was athletic or um like I said I went to the gym and then I was like okay I don't know what I'm doing now and so (laughs) you know but like I've never been an athletic person so I'm actually really I came to you with a couple goals and and definitely like I feel like I'm getting better and I can, one of them is posture as well. And, and I think mm-hmm. that's been really amazing to see. And, and, but really it's more like, I didn't realize I was competitive. <laughs> I know I, don't think I was a competitive person and now I'm just like, like, no, she's very competitive. <laughs> you know, she's, she is. And, and, and those are the things you, that we, you discovered, right. You didn't, you didn't know that. And now, now how does that like transfer into the other things of life? Right. Like it makes, yeah. It, it it just makes it better, right? Like mm-hmm. you have new powers in a way. Yeah, I feel I do feel um, like I can stretch myself, and I don't mean physically. <laughs> I mean, <Yeah>. you know, <laughs> I mean that. Yeah, that is. True. <laughs> but mostly, I feel like I can. I'm more willing to do things that I never would have been willing to do, um, even if it's just, you know, like an activity or taking on 
you know, a job or, you know, something, something that was out of my boundaries or reach before, just because I've been trying new things with my body. It's helped me mentally to feel like, well, I can do that. Or why not? It's not, what's it going to, you know, what's going to hold me back. And so I think that that's been really big lesson for me too. And that's kind of why I want to talk about this whole thing. Like you, your physical and your mental are one, like we always, I think people tend to separate them and they're not, they're one thing like, you know, and like the ability, when you say you can do two more and the people that are like, okay, two more push ups or whatever. And I'm like thinking there's and everyone goes, uh, yeah, but then you do it and you're like, okay, it's fine. You know, that's, yeah. the that, that's the, the mental is... push, you know? Totally mental. I don't know how many times I deal with that. Two more, one more. And I hear, oh, and in reality, did it kill you to do one, <laughs> two more? I mean, sometimes, sometimes, it, sometimes it does, but not all the time, right? Yeah. And you always have that, that little extra push that you don't want to do, right? Nobody wants to do it. But that's, those little things make the difference, right? Those little you know, it's accomplishing it. Like I said, we talk about just, I'm thinking back to like running a mile. I, I used to walk a mile and now I can, you know, it's one of those things that I, I use it as a gauge of fitness. And if I can't just get up and go run a mile, if it kills me, you know, that's an indicator for me that I got to get my fitness level higher. Right. Mm -hmm. So everyone has those things, right. We, we've gone through some workouts, you know, I know there's things you hate shoulder taps, right. <laughs> like I actually being like good Okay, most people hate shoulder taps. Daniel doesn't. But, I like them. <laughs> yeah, Daniel hates them. Um, but the things like that where it's like, hey, you know they should be able to get down and do 30 seconds. And, you know, the easier it is, the more in shape you are, the harder it is. Well, check yourself, right? Like maybe I got to get back to working out even more because something's declining. And having those, like, having those measurements, right, doing having a routine, like you said, mental, it's all mental. If you're not committed to it mentally – I think it starts mentally. If you're somebody out there that wants to do something, I want to make a change. You got to sit down and mentally map it out. You got to map out, you know, what are the things that are going to make me want to quit? I think that's one thing that you got to come across, right? What are the things that are going to come across? And sometimes you, you even know what's going to happen and you still can't get over that hump, right? You're like, well, I can be invited out by friends to go drinking. I'm going to stay out all night. I'm going to eat junk food and, I don't want to do that, but you do it anyway, right? Yeah. So there's things like that. But if you can map it out, you know how to kind of get that feeling before it comes, right? Before it comes and actually faces you, you can have a response. You can have a mental plan and hopefully beat it, right? Beat those things, those little things. Yeah. I actually love that. I just wrote that down um, because one of the things that we – uh, I do in my practice with people is kind of look at similarly, like look at what we create a health vision. Like what is your end? Mm -hmm. Like what's your health vision, you know, and um, funny thing with yours, you know, like you tell us like, I'm like, I don't want to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. And you're like, that's never going to happen. <laughs> but anyway, so my health. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> so you create your health vision and then it's like, okay, these are the things you have to do. Like these are your protocols, your action plans. And then you say what map out the things that are going to hold you back. And then we're saying like, okay, well, what, how are you going to stay and show, what are you going to say to yourself when you fall out of line alignment with your health vision? Like, how are you going to show up as your, your end game if you're not willing to show up today to get there tomorrow? So like what writing down, like, what are you going to say to yourself like mentally to check yourself back in when you're not playing to your highest self? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Similar. That's yep. I love that. And I, I think that's a good approach. And like I said, if sometimes you can still do that and still fail. Right. But you have just one more guard in place. You have something, one more plan in place. Right. And hopefully the more planned you are, the, then more things will fall in place. Right. And, so those are things that we want to focus on. Habits, we can we, we talk about habits all day. Um, you know, we started off with habits and changing habits is important. Um, what are habits that, you know, because I, I didn't really know you before you started working out, right? So I know the Jamie now, but what are some habits that are like different that you would say you have now that you work out? Are there any habits that are different? Are there only reinforced habits maybe i don't know um 
I definitely never stretched before. <laughs> <laughs> and now, okay, so I, I stretch more, but I also make sure that I like, so I sit at a desk I, and I'm not, that's new for me as well. I used to always be on my feet, but now that I sit at a desk all day and I know we're working out, I actually like get up and walk around and take breaks and move my body because I feel like if I don't the next day when we meet to work out, I'm going to be a mess. <laughs> good plan. But I already had pretty health. I mean, obviously nutrition, I mean, I had yeah. pretty good habits, but uh, I'd say like just more movement um, throughout the day and stretching and um, going on more, like be willing to go on more like hikes and things like that. I think that's really helped me because I feel stronger where before, um, I, I didn't, I didn't have that. I didn't feel strong, you know? And so mm -hmm. I think that's really helped me to feel like I can be more activate, like activated outside and do more things and not feel like I'm going to get winded. So that's, that's been really good for me. And I love, like, we're also um, training, learning jujitsu together. Mm -hmm. And that's been, I don't, there's no way I've always, my entire life, I've always wanted to take martial arts ever since I was a little kid, actually in the nineties, Daniel and I were like going to take martial arts. And I, mm -hmm. and I kept saying, I won't do it until I can get more flexible. And then I feel stronger. So this is a huge step because I'm in my forties and that's something I wanted to do since I was a kid, you know? And so I think that the fact that it gave me the confidence that I can actually do something physical is huge, you know, but again, it's taking that small step. I mean, I, I don't even remember. I think I just wanted to touch my toes and I'm like, okay, Daniel, I'll go work out with yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. That's, that's, well, so, so everybody has their different motivations, you know, and that's what got you in there. I want to touch my toes. <laughs> And, I, you know, getting older, I think that's part of it, too. It's something if you've never worked out really before, you know, I didn't want to be in my 50s and 60s hunched over. I was like, I got to start this now, and it's never too late. I think that's another thing. Never too late. Yeah. In never the gym, there's all these really adorable, like, I mean, I'm inspired by the people over what's over 70 years old in the gym. In there every day, right? Uh, but you yeah. see them every day. And. That's that's the secret. I think that's the secret to life. I mean, you gotta you gotta treat your body. It wants to move and wants to do things and do what you're capable of doing, right? I see people go in there and all they want to do is touch their toes, but you know <laughs> they're doing something, right? I'm like, they're, in, they're doing something. Yeah, I'm gonna touch my toes. Don't make me look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try my best not to make you look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's very hard for me. To not make her look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'm, I'm, I'm holding everything back right now to not let her be Arnold Schwarzenegger. Exactly. We're doing our best here. <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Okay, so back to just like a couple key things um, for motivation. And like somebody said, support is really important. Like, how do you know? Like, how do you know when somebody starts to work with you? Do you know, like, they're going to make it or they're not going to make it? And you know what I mean? Like, can you tell, or do you have, can you recommend things that help keep people on track? Like if they, they do one session with you and in your head, you're like, I don't know, it's probably not going to happen. You know, like, is there something you can do to help push them or do they just really have to find that fire in themselves? You, you know, it's, it's a little bit of both. Um, I think like we talked about mental map work earlier, I think finding that yourself is definitely going to help, right? If you can, you know, figure out a mental map work, but I think accountability too is a, is a big, uh, a big thing, right? So whatever is your inspiration is, you know, if it's going to a, a group fitness class because you have friends going, if you have a friend that works out, right. And you can find a friend to work out with you. If you have the means to get a personal trainer, get him that, you know, it's even, even me as a personal trainer, I find that my workouts, if I go work out with my friends or something, even if I'm leading it, not leading it, just working out casually, there's usually a little bit more of this kind of like, you know, excitement and energy to it, right? I know you can relate, right? So when working out with friends, having been in a group class, there's something to that. Like I said, having both. And so if you have someone to hold you accountable, if you have a friend to work out with, like, it, it really does make a huge difference. I, you know, that's why there is success in group classes. There is success in, you know, these CrossFit gyms because, 
people go for the social aspect and then you get the benefit of working out. Now, don't just go for the social aspect. <laughs> work out, please, right? Don't be that person that's just hanging out and not working out. Don't be that Let's person. Let's not do that. Don't be that Stop person. Stop talking okay? and start Stop rolling. talking. Start shrimping. <laughs> start shrimping. <laughs> Get to shrimping. <laughs> so, yeah. so I think that's really important, right? So really having, you know, a support system like we talked about, all those things are key. Yeah. Um, let's see, what else? We talked about that. What was the other part of the question? There's something I was, else I wanted to touch like, on that. I was just wondering as a trainer, you know, like, if you ever, you know, if you see people that are coming in and they yeah. think they want it, how can you help get them to come back? Like, you know, so, you so, ever notice, so like, that part of that is, yeah, part of that, that is finding that balance where, you know, everybody thinks they're going to, you know, be a trainer and it's like, I got to make them throw up. And that's what everybody, that's what everybody, that's what everybody thinks, right? Like that was the old school, you know, if they're not leaving here crawling, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I'm just okay, like, just, I can't believe that was a goal. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, that's kind of like what you think of. Like, if they're not sore, you know, so, and some people think that. If they're not sore, you can't walk for three days, I didn't get a good workout, which isn't necessarily true at all. You can't walk for three days. Every once in a while, sure, but it shouldn't be like that all the time, <laughs> okay? Um, so it's finding that balance of, you know, being able to make them want to come back. And, and giving them the, the recommended dose of exercise and, you know, not giving them stupid things to do or, you know, burpees or, you know, I, I'll do that every once in a while because Jamie just talks too much. But, you know, it's not, you know, it's not something where it's like, hey, we're going to do a thousand burpees and I'm going to make them puke and, you know, they're going to lose weight. You can only tell right? us to do that when you want me to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, you know, Obviously, right, like I, I give you guys the most value. I'm trying to give you guys the most bang for your buck with the exercises that you're doing, right? So exercises we do, a lot of full body technique that requires good posture, you know, and hopefully we're going at a pace that, you know, involves that cardiovascular health as well. That's so that's what we're trying to give point. you. Sam, that's one of the things I wanted to talk about um, is actually the functionality of it because I like how you – with us at least you definitely try to build up how to do it right instead of like mm -hmm. yeah let's just go hard you were like no no no, let's let's work on how to do it right to make sure your body like your body is structured right and they're doing the moves right and then we build it slow and and i actually really appreciate that for lots of reasons but also coming from a functional nutrition standpoint um when i first start working with clients <clears throat> they they think, oh, I got to start exercising. And, you know, some other like people that are in the health space will tell people, you know, it's all about fitness. And most of my clients are in a state of inflammation and high cortisol. And we actually need to do low impact strength training to build their body, but not up level their cortisol because that could just make them worse. And so it's kind of a constant battle. Like I have to find people that I can recommend them to that I know will take into account like understanding that you know and it, it's hard because i think that some same thing with food recommendations people are like oh i'm gonna eat healthy and and i'm like yeah but that's not healthy for you you know so it's like the same thing with movement and exercise i think it's really important that it's customized to what the person is needing and and able to do to build strength for the future and also understanding our, what their hormone i mean i know you guys may not know that but if somebody could like express that it's important come from what i look at because if somebody goes hard that will just tank their adrenal like their adrenals and then they're going to be in worse shape than they were before even though they think they're being healthy you know yeah that, that's something that very, it's very common i see that all the time where people you know they want to make a change. So what's the first thing they do? You know, you go, you have somebody who's eating a bunch of calories, bad calories, and then not working out, not doing anything. And they want to make a change. And the first thing they're going to do is they're going to say, I'm going to eat nothing, right? I'm just going to start eating lettuce and water and, you know, or uh, they make other mistakes, but they, they reduce their calories a lot. And then they go do this super intense exercise Right, going. It doesn't even have to be intense, but they went from doing nothing to trying to, you know, do everything that they can. Right, and so now you got this, like you said, talking about stress. You're literally doing 
a complete opposite of what you were doing before and you're trying to get results like that. And it's, it's all about steps, one step at a time, right? You don't, you know, like I said, I know people that go from eating cheeseburgers all day and say, I'm just going to eat a salad all day. And then I'm going to go run five miles and lift weights for two hours. And it's like, whoa, you know, build, build up one step at a time, right? Accomplish, accomplish one thing at a time, right? Hey, say, I'm going to eat healthier today and then healthier every other day. And I'm going to work out a little bit more every day, right? Maybe I'm going to work out for 30 minutes. I'm going to work out for 35 minutes. I'm going to work out for 45 in an hour. And then it becomes a routine. You know, it's when I'm teaching you guys exercises, you know, I break down the movements and, you know, I try and teach you one movement at a time, right? I don't say, hey, come grab the barbell, throw it over your head, squat, you know, <laughs> lunge. No, you know, we're going to learn how to do a perfect lunge first. We're going to learn to do a perfect squat with no weight first and get that down, get those little things down, right? You don't work out for nine months and you're like, I'm going to go straight to the barbell and I'm going to get underneath the heaviest weight and I'm just going to get back to doing what I used to do. And in reality, you can't do what you used to do, right? You got to start back, you know, little by little and, you know, progress little at a time. And, you know, even things that we do without the, within the workout, you know, we might start one part of the, the movement. We're going to do that first. And then we're going to do another part of the movement. We're going to do that. And then we're going to put it together. Let's put it all together now. You, you know, you, you just got to start how to do both parts, put it together, and now you're executing it well. Mm -hmm. Um and little progress, right? We don't want, like I said, we don't want you going from doing nothing to running three miles because you're trying to lose weight and now your ankles are wrecked, your knees are wrecked. You're not going to be able to run for another week now because you're taking steps back. Your diet's more messed up than it was before because, because you're not giving yourself enough calories, the right calories, the right nutrition. And these are things that we see. I mean, how many times do you see that? Yeah, and then people just get discouraged and then they stop instead of like taking those steps up, like you were saying, and building the foundation that's going to really be successful. So, yeah, and I appreciate that because I think I told you like somebody I know that's close to me, we started working out at the same time and um, she did, she was doing something else. She was at some kind of like boot camp. And I was like, yeah. she was telling me what she was doing. And I was like, whoa, girl, like, like, okay, we did 100 burpees. And then we had to like, do the kettlebell. And then we had to like, I, I mean, like a 1000 push ups. And I'm like, you know what I did? <laughs> I, did like, I think I did some squats and some lunges. And that's it. Like, we both did stuff for an yep. hour. But it, I mean, I'm no. still going and she's not so. <laughs> and, and I was going to say that, and, um, you know, for some people, you know, if, if you're, at, you know, really advanced and especially like those ex people that were in sports and they got to keep it going, you know, that they, they need that intensity. They want that intensity. But like we talked about, we're talking about somebody who went from doing nothing to now trying to do something that's way more than what they've ever done before yeah. and wrecked, right? Yeah. Just say wrecked. And how long, you know, what will happen is she'll do that for a little bit. She'll stop because what well, hurts, you know, I just gotta keep it up, whatever. And then when she wants to lose weight again, she'll go back to that for another three mm -hmm. months and then boom, boom. So while she was doing a thousand push-ups in the class, you were learning how to do 10 perfect push-ups on elevated. So you had a little bit of help and, you know, but you're doing them way better than just trying to do them and not doing them correctly. Right. Right. And, but again, just to reiterate for all you guys too, that follow me, that you have to, before you start any kind of, high intensity plan it is important that if your body just know like if you're not in a feeling in a good state of health or if you have digestion issues or mental issues like and i don't mean mental issues i mean like brain like fuzzy brain brain fog you're probably in a state of inflammation and high intensity needs to be advised like you you just can't go out there and do that because it's going to wreck your hormones <laughs> And that's, yeah. I think people don't really know that and they don't talk about that. And I see that a lot. Like that's one of the first things I have to do when I'm evaluating somebody is look at, um, okay, like how do we lower internal and external stress? Cause I think you can get a lot of endorphins and a lot of stress relief from working out, which is wonderful, but you have to make sure you're doing something that's in alignment with the state of your body at the time. So I just want to. Because that's the other thing. I think people are doing those things thinking that they're helping and it might be hurting, you know? Yeah. There's a point of diminishing returns, right? So you want to get to that point where you're, you know, and this is across the board. Obviously, people, 
you, like you're, you're talking about, you've got to be a little bit more sensitive, but across the board, anybody, there's a point where you're challenged enough, right? And you can push yourself a little bit more. And then there's a point above that where people will get there and it's just taking all this hard work, but you're not getting anything out of that, right? It's just like kind of over throttling. Like, you know, that's where you run the risk of getting injured or, or being, you know, wrecked for two days. There's a point, there's a sweet spot, right? There's a point where, I'm challenged enough and I can feel like I, I, I gave a good effort, but I'm not, you know, at this point where I was kind of imagine driving 150 miles per hour, you're just like, holy moly, you know, I got to just pay, you know, I, I got to do everything I can just stay within the lines, right? Because you're driving so fast. I do want to find that right, that right intensity. And how do you know? You know, you know when I'm looking at you guys, you know, how many times I ask you, how do, how do, how do you feel, right? Yeah. After every, you know, after every, after every time we do a set, I ask, how do you feel? How are you feeling? Because I can see it, and usually if it looks like your form is bad, well, it's, I'm there to correct it. But, you know, if, if, if you're just struggling because it's heavy, I can kind of get a gauge. Okay, you know, it's getting harder. Um, but sometimes you can actually feel it. Hey, Daniel. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> how's it going? Oh, Daniel don't, let's joins. not talk about what's going on with me. Let's talk about you guys. <laughs> well, we've already talked about you for like the first 20 minutes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, Sam. Yeah. Jo Daniel joined and I was like, invite. Well, no, it said the, it said the guest <laughs> wanted me to join. Yeah, I did. Okay, so I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were talking about you we were, um, in the beginning. So now we're talking about how you, but thought might as well join. Um, how do you know that sweet spot? Because Sam was saying how important it is to not like, you know, underdo it or overdo it. So I would, yeah. I would, I would, I would honestly say that I definitely have trouble finding the sweet spot unless I have, <laughs> Sam or, 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 or Josh, you know, one of, one of my trainers to sort of to push me because I think naturally I err on the side of, oh, I'm tired, you know. <laughs> and, no, I mean, it's, 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 it's why I, you know, it's, it's why yes. I've been working with Sam for, what, five years, four years? I don't know how long yeah. it's been. But it's, it's why I'll probably be working with him the rest of my life because, like, I need, I need that, that little push because otherwise, I mean, I can make myself sore. I can make myself out of breath, but I don't know if it's if, if it's quality, you know, when I'm doing that. So it's it, it's definitely, yeah, the sweet spot. Professional, you need to get professionals to help you out with that. I think. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, don't dismiss me. I'm always the one who's like, wait, if Sam's giving me like a weight, I'm like, Daniel's got to do twice as much. <laughs> That's right. So, right. so, but let, let's talk about today when I accidentally gave Daniel James weight. And I gave Jamie Daniel's weight. Right. And Jamie, Jamie over there is doing it, no complaints. And Daniel's like, yeah. Wow, my oh, my muscles are sore. I feel this. I know. I mean, yeah. I'm, that was placebo, great. I mean, placebo effect in, the, in a different direction. <laughs> I, I totally agree. <laughs> cool. Well, um, is there anything else, Sam, that you think is like really important to that you want to share with everybody? And I know you have, you have lots. You said you have other things, but I mean, because you and Daniel and I could go. <laughs> all day. Yeah, we could go on forever. Yeah. But Daniel, stay on for a minute. But, uh, you know, Sam, is there anything else that you think like for like people need to hear to keep motivated, to keep pushing, not give up, you know, or any other tips? You know, everything that we talked about, you know, one step at a time, progress, you know, slowly and, and reward yourself for the small wins. I mean, Hey, you know, one week, give yourself mini goals, right? And accomplish those goals and reward yourself for them. And then look at the next goal and go from there. And before you know it, right, three weeks, four weeks, you know, and, you, and you're accomplishing these goals and, and now you got a routine and, and things are going and, and don't give up. Consistency is key. I'd say like consistency, a hundred percent. You can work out as hard as you want for three months. And like I said, you, that fourth month, you don't do anything, you know, you're going to go back two months. So you're better off kind of having a smaller workout, right? Don't be afraid of having a small 30 minute routine daily, right? I think that'll benefit anybody, whether it's stretching, breathing, yoga, um, doing cardio for 30 minutes, start with, start with that, right? And if you get into a daily routine, that's where you start seeing those changes. And, and like I said, start with something small, maybe I'm going to do 10 push-ups a day. 
and then I'm going to do 12 push-ups a day. I'm going to walk up and down the street and, you know, every day. I'm going to run up and down the street every day and just do it. And then slowly add little progressions to it, a little more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And that, that's, that's the secret. There's no, there's no, there's no secret yeah. pill. There's no, there's no, there's nothing else. It's just, you know, doing a little bit more and, you know, little goals at a time. I mean, I think I, yeah, I mean, I, I think, and you guys may have already covered this, but I, I definitely feel like today in today's society, everyone's in a hurry. Everybody wants instant results. And, but I know when I first started working with Sam, I mean, it was six months, nine months before I was like, Oh yeah, this is great. You know, like I'm doing this right. I'm, 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 you know, I'm making gains and all that. And it was because Sam had me go slow. Like I was like, I was, I wanted to work out seven days a week. And I mean, on, on, on the days that I was yeah. in the gym, I was doing sit-ups and push-ups and everything. And it, and it's just, it's just a good thing that Sam was there to say, okay, don't be in a hurry. Let, you know, you, you want to do everything correctly. You don't, you know, cause that's how you get injury. But yeah, I, I, I totally agree with, with what he's saying. It's, it's just be patient and it'll happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Work on perfecting exercises instead of doing the exercises for the weight or whatever. If you perfect the exercises, it's going to pay off long term because then you're going to do it correctly, get the most benefit from it with the least amount of strain. And that alone is that's key. Right. So instead of just trying to load up all the weight and do things wildly, learn how to do things correctly. That's that's one thing that I, you know, is part of my philosophy is I'd rather, I don't know how many times I tell them, hey, you know, I want you to give me eight perfect reps. If you get to eight and you're doing perfect reps, do 10 to 12. But what I don't want is I don't want you to do 10 ugly reps or 12 ugly reps. Or, you know, they're uglier because you're thinking I have to get to 10 to 12, right? I was like, yeah. well, I want you to do eight perfect ones. And then if they're perfect at eight, do nine, 10, 11, right? If at eight, it's, you feel like I'm not going to get a perfect one at nine, then you shouldn't do it. Yeah. And, you know, that's something that I'll preach over and over again. Now, I always give, you know, one set, you know, usually a finisher or whatever, where I say, hey, it's okay to push yourself straight a little bit, but you don't want to do that all the time, right? Yeah, that's one of the things that um, I think when I first started working with you, I was like, noticed a huge difference between <clears throat> in the beginning, like Daniel and I, because and I was like, is this the difference between like men and women working out? Because I was like trying to go really slow and like, you know, and, and then Daniel's like, whoo, 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 you know? Yeah. <laughs> yep. and, like, and then he said that, yeah, usually women just kind of like, it's more of an energy expenditure thing or something, right? Is that what you've noticed? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think you guys are just more, you know, we want to be a little bit more wild and, you know, throw our bodies around and be aggressive. <laughs> and, yeah. and uh, I mean, I'm not saying, you know, females can be that way. Absolutely. But you know, somebody who's not, you know, if you, if you haven't played sports or haven't lifted weights, you know, it's, it's discovering it. Like we talked about, right. Yeah. You didn't know it was there, but it's there. And now, now she's competitive and choking everybody out in jujitsu and <laughs> using, using those, using those biceps to right? choke everybody. Totally. I know. I was like thinking about the other day when I didn't know what to do and I just ran at you like a bear. <laughs> <laughs> and Sam was in the back yeah. and he goes, Oh damn. <laughs> yep. <laughs> all, all right. Well, this was great. I really appreciate you coming on and sharing your story and Daniel for popping on. I mean, you have to go back and watch us talking about you for the first half of it. <laughs> we were just talking about your transformation story as well, because I really wanted this all to be. Well, and I can, I, and, and, and I, I have some, some other things to add about my transformation story. I don't know. It, it's, it's not related to, to physical, but it's related to mental. Yeah. But it all, yeah. But it all start. Do you, do you want me to do that now? Or do you want me to wait till? Yeah, no, I mean, Sam, I, if so, you, I would love for you to stay on, but if you have to go. And yeah, I, I got a client. I got to go, but okay. we could jump on again and do this uh, together again. So another yeah, time, let's so. do it again. Yeah. Definitely willing to do that. Okay. Appreciate okay. you. All Thank right. you. Yep. Bye. Have a good one, guys. Thanks. Bye. 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 Yeah, Daniel, share, because we were talking about that as well. Like, 
<clears throat> how the whole point was we think that we're going in to do something physical and then it ends up like this huge transformation that turns into something energetic, mental, even spiritual. Like you don't know what's going to blossom it, it into and how it just changes everything. Right. Yeah. So, so today <laughs> I did something that was really, really difficult. I, I went to see my dad uh, in a nursing home and it's something that I didn't want to do. And I mean, it was, it was this super emotional thing that I just, I was like, no, I don't want to see him. I don't, you know, cause I mean, I've been watching his decline, you know, for the last couple of years and that, that in itself was, was, was difficult enough, but you know, I was like, no, I don't want to see him like that. You know, he's, he's deteriorating. He's, you know, he, he, he's, uh, he just went on hospice. So probably don't have a lot of time, you know, left, but, um, but I, I, but one of the, but the thought process that I went through to, to go see him was I thought to myself, okay, you know, this is just like the gym. Like, it's not that I love going to the gym every day. It's that I know when I'm done, you know, I know when I'm done, it'll, it, it'll make me feel better. I'll feel good about myself. You know, I get all the good endorphins and everything. And it's, it's this sort of push pull situation. And I thought, well, that's, that's how I need to handle this thing with my dad. You know, I was like, I have to go do it. You know, it's part of the human experience, circle of life and all that. And, and that's basically how I psyched myself up to handle seeing my dad in a nursing home, you know, he, he can't walk. He's, he's just in a really bad, bad place. And, you know, that's, that's the only way I, I could have gotten myself to, 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 to do to the nursing home is, you know, the last three years, I've really learned that. And I, and I, I say this in the gym sometimes when uh, Sam will have us do a, a new exercise. Um, I'll think to myself, wow, that was really hard. And I really don't want to do that again. But that's why I have to do it again. You know, it's, it's this sort of idea of, you know, if, if something's not challenging me, if something, you know, is easy, um, then it's, it's probably, you know, it's, it's probably not helping me grow as a, as, as a, as a, as a human being. Um, and so, so, yeah, really, like my experiences with, with Sam, um, because way, this is way back, like, again, I think it was four years, five years. Four. But, was it four? Okay, yeah. So four years ago, like I was, you know, I wasn't in a good place emotionally. And I knew I needed to change my life. And so I went to the gym and, and Sam and I started working. And it helped. It was a huge boost to my mental health, you know, wor working out in the gym. And that's why I'll, I'll never stop exercising, you know, for, for the rest of my life, because it was it's such an important part. And then recently, it's been helping, you know, it, it's helping me deal with all sorts of things that come up that really have nothing to do with being in shape physically, yeah. but it's, 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 it's helping me get in shape mentally. So, yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. Thank you for sharing all that. That's, oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's really well, cool. now that I'm, now that I'm done crying, you know, <laughs> now I can kind of talk about it and, you know, but yeah, I mean, after, after seeing my, I mean, it was, it was, it was a, it was no bueno, you know, for a couple hours there and it's just, you know, and, but yeah, so absolutely. I'm, I'm happy yeah. to share. I think it's inspiring and that's kind of what Sam and I started the conversation with. Um, and then we actually did talk about you two, too. So we were like, so I'm going to make sure you're cool with this because I, I was going to post it. And if you're not, then I won't. But, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, but like, you know, we were just talking about how just taking the leap, you know, how small changes impact big changes. And a lot of times it's just something pushes us to the edge and then we take the leap. And, and even if you don't know what the end result's going to be. And so we shared the story of you. Um, I said, like, I, uh, I am a nice person, but I have never, I've always been told sometimes I can say things and people are like, whoa. <laughs> so <laughs> one of the things that we went, you know, we went to a, um, arm wrestling, you know, oh, yeah. I think I was like, don't wrestle that guy. You might break your arm. And you were like, <sighs> you know, like, I'm going to go work out. Right. You know, like, right, right. break my arm. I you know. Know? <laughs> <laughs> and so, and then like how just like all of the changes, the, the, the strength, the, you know, posture, I mean, I like, that's what I wanted too was posture, but like the strength, the posture, the confidence to led you to then boxing. And everybody was like, what, I you know, know. How, now you're saying it's helping you with dealing with other situations. And I just think that's really cool. And that's kind of what I wanted people to know is like Sam's transfer 
transformation story and also for me to share like everything's about transformation but to do that you have to you know you have to do it on a physical and a mental and a soul level and yeah. that that doesn't come cheap it comes with you know putting in the work and sometimes totally. we just hold ourselves back or we make all of these reasonings because i did that like i remember also sharing in my early 20s, I gained like 40 pounds. I was really unhappy and I didn't realize my body was in a state of inflammation. So I thought, oh, I'm going to go work out. And I didn't know what I was doing. I was actually probably making things worse because when you're in a state of inflammation, you really shouldn't be doing high impact exercise. <clears throat> but I started telling myself all these stories like, oh, well, um, I don't know what I'm doing at the gym. So I'm just not going to work out anymore because I might get hurt or, Oh, well, I can't hire a personal trainer because I don't have the time or, you know, like whatever the stories we are that we tell ourselves, I think it's important that we like back up and <clears throat> Sam and I were discussing like, what's the reason behind every single story that you tell yourself, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you totally. know, and how can you just erase one and just go for it and take the leap and stay motivated? Because at the end of the day, like, look at your story, all the things that have been impacted by you just having some discipline, even when you didn't want to, you know, you right. showed up for yourself, even when it was hard, or even when you didn't feel like it. And that's, that's the real reason of this IG live of, just putting it out there to everyone. Like, what can you do even if it's hard? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. yeah. So, cool. Well, thanks for being, letting us talk about you this entire time. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and jumping on. Um, yeah, totally. So awesome. See All you right. guys. I guess I'll see you in see the you next week. <laughs> That's right. See you okay. in the gym. Bye. Right. Bye.